Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Bustin' Boxes. I'm Seth, the mild-mannered mage, coming at you with another unboxing video. Uh, today we are looking at March of the Machine. Uh, this weekend was the pre-release weekend, so I picked up uh, this fresh pack box of set boosters uh, that we're going to be cracking here on camera. Uh, we are also going to be including a couple of Magic the Arena codes uh, throughout this video, so be sure to keep an eye out for those uh, while we are opening up these packs. Uh, and so what are we looking for out of this box? I mean, there's a couple of great cards here. Um, we have the two, the new dual creature cards where it features uh, two creatures from the history of magic from the various planes that are being visited. Um, we've also got some cool reprints in plane specific art styles. Uh, so, uh, for example, Ragavan got reprinted with some pretty cool art. Uh, he would be a great grab out of this. Um, we also have the new Praetor cards. Uh, which flip into sagas. So we have uh, the new Elish Norn, uh, Jen Gataxius, uh, Urbrask, Shieldred, and my boy Vorinclex. Uh, a little bit later, we'll be doing a uh, deck tech video on my Vorinclex deck, uh, but I wanted to see if I got some things uh, out of this set to help me upgrade it. So let's... Uh, dive into this box so let me get this opened up first this is always the hardest part getting the plastic off the box and then for some reason uh my amazon device decided to respond so kind of funny i don't know if the uh if the camera picked up on that but if you heard a mysterious voice in the background that's what it was all right, so to make my life easier, we're also, oh, here we go. This is kind of, got some pretty cool art here. So not sure what this is in alluding to. Oh, there's uh, Borgamius and Fibblefip. I'm not, I'm probably murdering this guy's name. Um, and Thibblefip, uh, two of the uh, creatures featured on a card. And then I'm not sure what art this goes to, but that's kind of a kind of an interesting art here. All right. So to make my life easier while we're cracking these packs up, I'm going to be doing this into three segments since there are three packs of stacks of cards within the box. I think that'll make it a little easier on me so that I don't have to keep talking for an hour straight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make sure they're all even. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can guess that this one has 11. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there we go. There's our mysterious one. So we're going to set these packs off to the side, except for this one. And this will be our first one. So uh, after the break, we will get to cracking. All right, so here is our first stack of cards, and let's get into it. Well, if I can, there we go. It's always when you're cracking packs on camera, that's when they don't want to behave. All right, so we've got our art card, and are these upside down? How are these? I think these are upside down, I'm not sure. So we'll see with this first one. So here is a foil. Yep, I'm thinking these are upside down. So our rare for this pack is Boon Bringer Valkyrie. Backup one, Flying First Strike Lifelink. Angel Warrior Creature. Uh, it's a 4-4, so that's pretty cool. 
Yeah, these are all upside down. So here is Tezuka Umazawa Fugitive. Creatures you control with power one or toughness one or less. Power or toughness one can't be blocked. And that's a human rogue. And then we have our battle. Like I said in our first, uh, in the uh, Spoils of War episode two video, you can always tell during the pre-release when somebody had a battle in their hand because they're turning their cards to the side like this to read it or cocking their head. Um, so this is Invasion of Asgol. Uh, black and red. Uh, when Invasion of Asgol enters the battlefield, target player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker and loses one life. And then that flips into the Ashen Reaper, Manache 2-1. At the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on Ashen Reacher if a permanent was put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn. All right. Blight Reaper Thalid. Whoa. It's the bad thing about this camera's mount is, yeah, I keep hitting it by mistake. Uh, Blight Reaper Thalid, Fungus, uh, Black and One, 2-2, two, two, can transform it for three and a Phyrexian Green. And that flips into Blight Sower Thalid, a 3-3. Three, three, when this creature transforms into Blight Sower Thalid or dies, create a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Sapling Creature token. Gift of Completion. Allows you to incubate three. Incubate is kind of an interesting mechanic. It gives you this artifact with three 1-1 one, one counters on it that doesn't really do anything. And then you pay two to transform it, and it becomes a Phyrexian artifact creature with that many 1-1 counters on it. It's a 0-0, zero, zero, but because of the counters, it doesn't die. So it's kind of an interesting mechanic. I'll be interested to see how that translates over into Commander, which is the main, main version of Magic that I play. Uh, Phyrexian Awakening, uh, Incubate 4, Phyrexians have Vigilance, uh, and then here are our commons. And then a land, and our art. Pretty nice art. Actually, you know what? I'm going to switch. Here's our commons, uncommons, and then our fun reprints are going to go there. Alright, into the next one. Oh, and we've got a list, Reign of Daggers, destroy all creatures. For each creature destroyed this way, you lose two life. Um, that seems kind of wrong, especially if there's a lot of creatures on the battlefield, so I don't know if I'm going to be playing that one or not. Put my list cards there. Here's our foil. Um, foil piles right there. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Create a treasure token uh, for four mana, two black, and two. Hey, an alt art of uh, Pol Polycaranus, a reborn. Um, probably butchering that name. This was actually my big, I guess my best rare that I pulled from my pre-release kit. Uh, three green for a four or five with reach, and then for six and a Phyrexian mana, you can transform it. The transform card is the Engine of Ruin. I really like the constellation art on this card. Uh, reach and lifelink six six when it uh, ruin Engine of Ruin or another non token Hydra you control dies, create a three three green and white Phyrexian Hydra creature token with reach and a 3-3 green and white Phyrexian creature token with lifelink. So, Hydra tribal in green-white, and when those non-token uh, non Hydras die, you get two Hydras in its place. That's very, very Hydra-y of this uh, card. So, uh, that could be interesting for, um, for Commander little um, Hydra tribal. And then we got, uh, for our reprint, Ryev, My Master Smith, um, red and white for a 2-2. Two -two. When a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, that creature gains double strike until end of turn. So that can make for some very scary creatures, um, especially in Commander. If you use him as your Commander, low cost, 
throw some nice enchantments or some um, some artifacts in there, get him nice and beefy and swing out for commander damage. There you go. And then we have a battle, Invasion of Vern, uh, which I think that's where uh, Jace is from. If, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments because I think there's a, a card, it's a flip card from uh, Magic Origins. It's uh, Jace Vren's Prodigy, so I think this is right. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw three, then discard a card for a blue and three, and then that flips into Overloaded Mage Ring. Uh, pay one and tap it to sack it. Copy target spell you control. Uh, that's that's okay, I guess. I mean, I'm not super excited about that. So let's put that here. And then so we've got our commons, uh, or a common, because that's right, because it's, because these are set boosters, you know, they, they can be, they're not in like a set order. So Corruption of Tawashi, uh, Incubate 4, whenever a permanent you control transforms or a permanent enters the battlefield under your control, transformed, you may draw a card, do this once. Tangled Skyline, uh, I use this in my uh, pre-release deck. Um, gain five life, incubate five, make your Phyrexians have reach. So take care of those uh, pesky flyers. So here's some commons, commons. Also use this card in my pre-release deck. Another deadly diversion. And then, oh, that's kind of a fun uh, foil swamp. I like that. It really makes this Phyrexian symbol on this uh, land pop. We'll put that uh, here. And then there is a tolly. Sadness on the stack for a tolly being completed. All right, into the next one. Uh, this is, there we go. Get there. <laughs> So, this was an, also another, oh, here's a treasure token, uh, another card that I pulled in my pre-release kit, Atris Oracle of half uh Menace, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and sets, ser separates them into a face-down pile and a face-up pile, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So it helps you kind of filter through and it's interesting to see uh, how you're opponents will uh, will pull those cards. And then here's one of those fun um, dual commander cards that we were talking about, or dual creature cards. So Kolga and Yodaro. So these are from um, Ikoria. Uh, so it's an eight dinosaur turtle. So you've got the eight, which is Kolga, and then the Yodaro is the dinosaur turtle. Uh, two green, two red, and two. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. It gains trample and haste until end of turn for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, or it fights target creature you don't control. And then you can pay two, a red and a green. Discard Kolga and Yadara. Destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. Then draw a card. So this has a fight mechanic on it, um, which is from Kolga. It also has a destroy it uh, mechanic, which is from Kolga. And then also the shuffle it into your library is from Yadaro, I believe. Uh, so kind of interesting to see uh, this pairing on a card. And then we've got Rafe Weatherlight Stalwart, uh, legendary human wizard. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may tap two untapped creatures you control if you do draw a card. And then pay two white and three creatures you control, get plus one, plus one, and vigilance until end of turn. Our battle for this set is Invasion of Regatha. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to another target battle or opponent and one damage up to one target creature. And then once you get it destroyed, it flips into the Disciples of the Inferno. Uh, prowess, uh, if, if a non-creature source you control would deal damage to a creature, battle or opponent, it deals that much damage plus two. So nice way to kind of build up the damage. Then we have Order of the Mirror. 
Elvish Vat Keeper, uh, Incubate 2, Pay 5, Transform Target Incubator Token you control, double the number of 1-1 one, one counters on it. So if you pair it with that one card we looked at that uh, incubates 5, Pay 5, you got a 10-10 on the board. So that's kind of, uh, kind of nice, interesting. Norn's Inquisitor, Incubate 2. Whenever a permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That's kind of nice. I wonder if there is an, a good Incubate Commander uh, that we might be able to pair that with. I'll have to, to look. Uh, Sculpted Perfection, uh, Incubate 2. Phyrexians get plus 1, plus 1. Kind of keep my cards here separated. Skittering Surveyor, Flywheel Racer, Urn of the Godfire, and then a Blossoming Sands for our land. And that's a foil land, nice. And then we have this, oh, that's kind of fun art. I like that, it looks like from Kaldheim. What do we got here? Finn the Fang Bearer, God Machine. I like that art. That's pretty sweet, I'd, I'd get a play mat with that on it. <laughs> All right, next pack here. So we've got a warrior token. Kayami of Whispered Hopes. If one or more 1-1 one -one counters would be put on a permanent you control, put that many plus one uh, but that many plus one, one, one counters are put instead. Add X mana of any one cutler where X is Kayami of Whispered Hope's power. That could go, interestingly, into my uh, Vorinclex deck uh, because it deals a lot with the one, one counters. So I might set that aside and see if we can't do something with that. Uh, we got another, here's the regular art of that Paula, Palucranos, Palucranos. And then just so the regular art of that as well. Uh, Kwindi, Pride of Femerif. Fim double strike creatures you control with first uh, with first strike have double strike. So that's kind of an interesting add-on. And then we also have this Arithmacy's Slumbering Isle, another pre-release card that I pulled. Um, when it enters the battlefield, uh, it comes in tapped with five slumber counters on it. It is a, uh, Kraken. We're going to release the Kraken. Uh, so it is a 12-12, uh, blue, green, and two. Comes in with five slumber counters. As long as it has slumber counters, it is a land. And, uh, whenever you cast a smell, you may remove a slumber counter from it. And then you can tap it to add green and blue. So if you got a way to really blue green spell sling, get those counters off, and then you got a 12 12 that folks have to deal with. That's that's pretty cool. And then we got another rare. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Orphean Hero of Lava Brink. Uh, red and three for a human soldier. Pay one and red and tap it to create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control. It gains haste. Sack it at the beginning of the next end step. Activate it as a sorcery. Uh, six and three red. Tap it. Create five treasure or five tokens that are copies of another target creature you control. They gain haste. Sack them at the end, uh, at the beginning of the next end step. Wow. So you can make some big boys with this, but it is pretty expensive to pull it off. So you need some good, uh, mana acceleration in that to be able to pull that off. Uh, we've got a siege. Uh, invasion of Moag, um, when it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. That's pretty nice. Well, in Selesnia colors, too, that's a, that's a given. And then that flips over into Bloomwielder, Dryads, Ward 2, so that make it harder to uh, attack this or target it. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control, so keep making, making those creatures bigger. Uh, then we've got Tarkir Dune Shaper. Tiller of Flesh, whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, incubate two. 
that's pretty cool. So start ramping or start pumping out those uh, incubate tokens. Uh, Mutagen Connoisseur, Videlkin Mutant uh, gets plus one plus O for each transformed permanent you control. So that's on the Phyrexian side of things. Love this art for Mirrodin Avenged. Karn holding the head of Elish Norm. That's just wow. Single black destroy target creature that was dealt damage this term. Draw a card. That is, uh, I tell you, that is just vicious art right there. Atraxa's Fall. Oh, not Atraxa. One in green. Destroy target artifact battle enchantment or creature with flying. And then there's our land for the turn and our art card. So I'd love to know what cards you are happy to pull out of your boxes or your pre-release kits uh, here. Give us a comment and let us know what you're really excited to pull out. A uh, night card. Moment of Truth is our foil. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one into your hand, one into your graveyard, and one on the bottom. So that goes there. Glissa, Herald of Predation. At the end of combat on your turn, choose one, incubate tw two twice. So create two of those incubate tokens. Transform all incubator tokens you control. Phyrexians you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. So this might be your good uh, incubator um, commander. Uh, beginning of combat, start pumping out those tokens. It's in green, so you can put your token doublers in this, um, and then you can transform them all at the beginning of your combat. So, combat one, incubate twice, plus all the other incubate instances you might have in green. And then, next combat, transform them all. Yeah, this, this might be the one. This might be the incubator, um, the token incubator, um, Commander. Another card I pulled out of my pre-release kit, Nivmizik's Reborn. Uh, Wooberg for a 6-6 flyer. Uh, Nivmizik Reborn enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library for each color pair. So there's 10 color pairs. Choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the rest of the chosen cards into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. I can I tell you when this card came out in, uh, what was it, Ravnica Allegiance, I was kind of disappointed because I thought he was going to come back as a Planeswalker, not this reborn uh, dragon avatar. So that was kind of, um, yeah, to me it was kind of a letdown. But the art on this is fantastic. I do do like that. We'll put that there. We have a battle invasion of Dominaria. When it enters the battlefield, gain four life and draw a card. And then it flips into Sarah Faithkeeper, 4-4 four, four, Flying Vigi Angel. Then we've got our Kenra Spell Spear, Trample Prowess, three in uh, a Phyrexian Blue, uh, Transform it. So it's a one red for a two two into Gitaxian spell stalker trample ward two prowess prowess. Wow, that's a lot. So double prowess trample and ward two. So yeah, that's that's kind of uh, a a lot on an uncommon. Sun blessed guardian one white and one five and a Phyrexian red to transform this 2-2 into Furnace Blessed Conqueror. Whenever Furnace Blessed Conqueror attacks, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on that token for each 1-1 one, one counter on Furn bless, Furnace Blessed Conqueror. Sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. Wow. So that's, that's a lot there too, so... Then we have Streetwise Negotiator, Backup One. So that was another interesting um, mechanic. So this is a Cat Citizen for a Green and One O2, Backup One. When this creature enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. If that's 
another creature, it gains the following ability until end of turn. This creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So you can give that to another creature for a turn. So if you got a big booty defender, or not really a defender, but a creature with a big butt on it, you can swing with it and it'll do damage based off of its toughness rather than its power. That's uh, that's kind of interesting. I like that. Uh, and then Scornblade Berserker, back up one again, so can uh, give it to another creature you control. Uh, pay one, sack it, draw a card. And then we've got some uncommons here. Uncommons there. Full art land this time. That's kind of a fun Phyrexian mountain. And then poor Omnom. We knew ye well. I knew that he was going to get five colors somehow, right? I just didn't realize it was going to be through completion. So, all right. So, let's get this cleaned up just a little bit. Pardon the mess as we go through and clean clean up the stacks and make it a little bit easier. All right, only five packs remaining in this stack. So let's get into the next one. There we go. Clean opening, that's what I like to see. All right, so that's just a blank card. Uh, so we've got a Foil Siege, Invasion of Aaron. We already saw this one. Into Zimone and Dina. Uh, so this would be from Strixhaven or Hogwarts. Uh, green, black, and blue for a human dryad. Uh, three, four, whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Uh, tap, sack another creature, draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you control eight or more lands, repeat this process once. So this could be a very, um, in terms of a commander deck, uh, land heavy base. Uh, you're in Sulti, so you're going to have lots of draw, um, lots of lands in your hand. So this might be a fun commander. And then there he is. There's the Yargle. Glutton of Urborg, 9-3, just straight up stomping face. Uh, so, one black and four for a 9-3. Consuming a single drop of the oil would spell doom for most living things. But Yargle was not most living things, and he ate enough to clean up most of Urborg. I'd be interested to see if I pull a Yargle and um, Boltani. The largest creature now in Magic that is a card, not a token. 18-6, you know, just for a straight-up stomper. So that that could be uh, be a lot of fun. So interesting alt art on that as well. So let's get into the next. Uh, Invasion of Zendikar. I played this in my, um, my pre-release deck. Uh, Enters the Battlefield. Search for two basics, put them into the battlefield taps for green and three. And then that'll flip over into Awaken Skyclay, Vigi Haste. Um, as long as it's on the battlefield, it's a land in addition to its other types. And it'll tap for one man of any color. It goes up here. Aetherblade Agent. Fearless Scald for Dwarf Berserker. Back up one. So again, granting that ability to another creature. Um, double Strike. Mirror Shield Hoplite. Vigilance. When a creature you control becomes the target of a backup ability, copy that ability. You may choose new target. So you could run a backup deck and have him as your, uh, not your commander, but a, a good buff in there. Vanquish the Weak. Wildwood Escort. Now I'm just going to go through these commons real quick. And then here's our land for turn. And, oh, well, that's pretty. What is that? Invasion of Eldrain. I'm interested to visit Eldrain. Eldrain was a really fun set. I enjoyed it. So I'm interested to see what they do with it with the new Eldrain set coming out. Is it later this year, I think? It might be. 
I am not sure. All right. Another warrior token. Searing Barb as our foil. And there's another Omnath. So uh, the buy box promo for this set was this Omnath. So finding another one, that's always a good thing. So Wooberg with a Phyrexian Black for the black symbol. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes black instead. So um, float all your mana, it becomes black. At the beginning of your pre-combat man phase, look at the top of the card of your library. You may reveal that card. It has three or more colored mana symbols in its mana cost. If you do, add three mana of any combination of its colors and put the rest and put it into your hand. If you don't reveal it, just put it into your hand. So I could see running this as a three, four, five mana deck. Um, everything is three, four, five. That way you're constantly getting draw off of him. So, but I'm sure with Wooberg, there's lots of fun things that you can do with him. All right, and then our alt art re. Oh no, this is a uh, not a reprint. This is the uh, from this card, I think, because it doesn't have that symbol on it. So, Quintorus Lore Master. This is just an alt art of this card. Uh, white, red, and three vigilance at the beginning of your instep. Exile target non-creature, non-land card from your graveyard. Make a three, two, red, white spirit creature token. Uh, you got white, so you could run Anointed Procession or the uh, Mondrake Dominus from All Will Be One. Uh, pay one, red, and white. Sack a spirit, choose target card, exile with Quintorus. You may cast that card this turn without paying its mana cost. If that spell will be put into a graveyard, put it in the bottom of its owner's library instead. Wow. So you can, you exile a non-creature, non-land. So instant sorcery, enchantment, planeswalker, and then you can pay to sack a spirit. So spirit tribal in this with the spirits that he's gonna make. Uh, and cast a card without paying its mana calls. It doesn't go back into exile, but goes back into your library. That's stupid, yo. That could be a fun Boros Commander. I, I like that. That That's pretty fun. That's a good revisit from Quintoris from Strixhaven. And then we've got Tigum Ojutai Master for our reprint. Um, instant sorcery and dragon spells you control can't be countered. Well, that's stupid and white blue. Uh, when you cast an instant sorcery spell from your hand, if Tigum Ojutai Master attack this turn, that gain, spell gains rebound, so you can cast it again at the beginning of your next upkeep. So that's pretty stupid. Um, I think he is from Cons, I believe. So that could get stupid quick. Um, for our, we've got Invasion of Golf, our Golfa again. Oh no, we haven't done this one. This was in, um, one of my pre-release kits. That's why I'm like, oh, we got this one again. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. And then Grandmother Ravi Singir flying. That's kind of funny art. The grandmother in a chariot pulled by bats. That's hilarious. Uh, when an, an, a uh, creature an opponent controls dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Grandmother Ravi Singir, and you gain one life. We've already seen the Blight Spear. Oracle of Tragedy. When it enters the battlefield or dies, choose one, draw, then discard. Shuffle up to four target cards with mana value three or greater from your graveyard to the library. That's pretty good. Furnace Reigns. Grain control of target creature until end of turn. Something that red does very well. It gains haste, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, create a treasure. Furnace Gremlin, played this in my um, pre-release deck. When it dies, incubate X, where X is its power. And you can buff it for one in red. And then getting through our commons, not a lot of commons. And then our land and our art. That's the Disciple of Shieldred, I believe. Rona, yep, Herald of the Invasion. I think she was a disciple of Shieldred in a previous set. And it looks like she's been completed. No big shock there. All right, three packs left in this stack. Let's get it done.
All right, so we've got a list card, The Mending of Dominaria. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. You may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, like that. So that's chapters one and two. And chapter three, return all cards, all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, then shuffle your graveyard into your library. So that's very appropriate for this set, March of the Machines, I think. So we'll put that with our other list card, Thunderhead Squadron. Oh, and then here we have a rare um, battle. Uh, when Invasion of Kaldheim enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. Until the end of your next turn, you may play cards exiled this way. Um, this might go into my Prosper deck. I'm not sure because exiling cards from hand and then drawing cards, so kind of cycling through the library. That's a big bonus. And then Pyre of the World Tree, discard a land. Pyre of the World Tree deals two damage to any target. When you discard a land, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. I mean, just for this effect for a red and three, I think is worth it for the um, Prosper deck. So I'm gonna set that card up here so I don't forget it. Uh, then we've got uh, Shana Sisei's Legacy. Can't be the target of abilities your opponent's control. Um, so Hexproof. Oh no, it just abilities, not spells. Uh, and then she gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. So good in your Tokens Matter decks. And then we've got a another reprint of Emery Lurker and the Lock. Oh, I love that art. Is that Seb McKinnon? No, it's not. That's surprising. But I would get a playmat of that. That's pretty awesome. Costs one less for each artifact you control. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, mill four. Tapper to choose target artifact in your graveyard. You may cast it this turn. So that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. I like that. Uh, I used to run her in my um, equipment deck. Galea Equipment. Uh, invasion of Lorwyn, Black and green and four uh when it enters battlefield destroy target non-elf creature and opponent controls with power x or less where x is the number of lands you control i apologize for frizzle barking in the background and then winnowing forces elf warriors uh power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control so you're in green you're going to have lands lots of elves to go get you lands this is a good elf ball siege i believe so we talked about him, the Phyrexian Sensor. Each player can't cast more than one non-Phyrexian spell each turn, so good limiter for your non-Phyrexian decks. Non-Phyrexian creatures enter tapped. So yeah, that's that's pretty good right there. Copper Host Crusher, uh, Trample and Hexproof for an 8-8 eight, eight for eight. Eh, that's, that's okay. And then here's some commons, commons. Commons. And then our Alt Art Plains. I like that. It looks like a canyon. Pretty cool. And then our art card. Thalia and the Git Grog. That's another kind of fun pairing that I wouldn't have expected. Alright. After this one, we've got one more pack, and then we'll move on to the next one. way wrong way all right so aerial boost as our foil errant and giada i believe this is from a new capenna for a human angel uh flash flying for a uh, blue white and one look at the top card of your library at any time i think that's a giada ability and then you may cast spells with flash or flying from the top of your library and i think that's an errant. I am not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, and then we've got R Rona Children's Faithful. Not a big surprise since she is getting printed in this set as well. Um, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses one life. So blue black spell slinger. Uh, you may cast her from your graveyard by discarding two cards in addition to paying the other costs. All right. And then what other surprises do we have here? Oh, this looks like a Commander Deck card. Elspeth's Talent, nice. 
uh, two white and two Enchant Planeswalker. Enchanted Planeswalker has plus one, create three, one, one white soldier creature tokens. So that's one of her original Planeswalker abilities. When you activate an ability of Enchanted Planeswalker, creatures you control get plus two, plus two in Vigilance until end of turn. So that's a great way to uh, turn one of your Planeswalkers into a token maker. And then that will go there. Invasion of Kylum. Uh, enters the battlefield, up to two target creatures get plus two, plus oh, and gain vigilance and haste until end of turn. And then it turns into Valor's, Re Valor's Reach Tag Team. Create two, three, two red, white warrior creature tokens, and whenever this creature or and at least one other creature token attack, put a one-one counter on this creature. Uh, let's see. This is Invasion of Xerix. White and blue and two. When it enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature to its owner's hand. And it turns into Vertex Paladin, Angel Knight. Uh, power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. Well, white. Uh, it's in white, so that's tokens. Great way to make a beefy boy. Skyclave Aerialist. Uh, flying 2-1, transform it for 4 and a Phyrexian Green into Skyclave Invader. Uh, look at the top card of your library. If it's land, put it on the battlefield. Uh, if you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it in your hand. So if it's land, to the battlefield. If not, draw it. Uh, Phyrexian Gargantua. When it enters the battlefield, draw 2 and lose 2. Uh, 6 mana for a 4-4. Four, four. But it has the draw on it, so I think that's okay. Glistening Deluge. All creatures get minus one, minus one till end of turn. Creatures that are green and or white, so some targeted removal, get minus two, minus two. And then we've got some commons here. And then our land for the pack. And then our art. What is that? Stoke the Flame. That's pretty badass. Like the dragon in there. And then this is our last pack for this block. And then we'll take a break and hit up the next one. All right. Let's see what this block has, the last pack of this block has for us. Hopefully something good. Blood Feather Phoenix, okay. Can't block, so it's a red and one for a 2-2 can't block, but does all the attacking. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent or battle, you may pay red. If you do return it from the graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste until end of turn, so a recurring attacker. Well, that's that's okay. That's not too bad, I guess. Igna Rune Eyes. This looks like from uh, Kaldheim, from, based off of the art. Uh, enters the battlefield, scry three. Uh, when it dies, draw three cards if three or more creatures died this turn. Invasion of Kaldesh. Uh, that was like the Aetherflux Reservoir right there. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one Thopter. Uh, so, I mean, well, I mean, it's a red and blue, so just low cost. And that turns into... Aetherwing Golden Scale Flagship. Uh, so it turns into a vehicle. Power is equal to the number of artifacts. So this would be for Artifacts Manor and Crew 1. So the crew cost isn't too bad. It gives you the creature you need to crew. So we've talked about Order of the Mirror. Omen Hawker. Add uh, Colorless and Blue. Spend this mana to activate abilities only. Halo Forager. Enters the battlefield, you may pay X. When you do, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with mana value X from a graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell will be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. Okay. And then kind of go through these last commons. And I think that's everything that this pack has to offer. All right, so what do we think so far of this box of March of the Machine? It's had some fairly okay stuff in it so far, but we still have 20 cards to go. And as we are going through this deck, we're finishing up this first block. Let me go ahead and give y'all a code. 
So here is an arena code for the first folks to snag it. We'll leave it up here for a second and then we'll put it away. And after the break, we will start on block two. All right, and welcome back to part two of our breaking boxes uh, video. Uh, we're continuing opening our packs of March of the Machine, and we are into our second stack of 10 booster packs. So let's get to cracking. So we've got our treasure token. Storm the Seed Core, distribute four counters among up to four target creatures you control. Okay, so this is that uh, that art we were talking about earlier from uh, from the box. See? That's it right there. Got there. Storm the Seed Core. All right, so that is our foil for this pack. Oh, here we have a Croxa and Coronos from Theros, an Elder Giant Dog. Uh, so you've got the Elder Giant, which is Karaxa, and then Koronos, um, which I believe is the Hound of Aethrios. Uh, Vigilance, Menace, and Lifelink. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may exile five cards from your graveyard. When you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you're in Mardu colors, and you're wanting to uh, dump a lot of cards. That's great in red and black. So we've got some good, uh, could have some good synergies there. And I really like this, uh, that they're reusing the um, Constellation art for these cards. So that's pretty great. Uh, keeping with the Theros theme, Daxos Blessed by the Sun is our reprint. Uh, so, devotion is, uh, toughness is equal to your devotion to white. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control or dies, it gain, uh, you gain one life. Oh, and then we also have, so this is a, um, commander card, Gimbal Gremlin Prodigy. Artifact creature you control have trample. Uh... At the beginning of your end step, create a 0, zero red gremlin artifact creature token. Put X11 one, one counters on it where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. So you need something that'll make a bunch of artifact tokens. Um, I think you could put Bruniclad in this, red, red, blue. Um, no, that makes everything the same token. Uh, hmm, I'd have to think through this one, but that is one of the commander cards from this set. Uh, invasion of Kamigawa, blue and three. Uh, when there's battlefield, tap target artifact or creature an opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. So uh, if it has a stun counter, it would be untapped. Remove the stun counter from it instead. And then that flips over into Rooftop Saboteurs. Uh, a 2-3 Moonfolk Ninja. Uh, flying when it deals combat damage to a player battle, draw a card. All right. Uh, we've already seen Skyclave Aerialis. Surge of Salvation, one white for an instant. You and permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Prevent all damage that red or black sources would deal to creatures you control. So it's almost like a <coughs> almost a white heroic intervention. Zeros Xerix Strobe Knight. Human Knight, Flying Vigi for a uh, single blue and two for a two-two. Tap it to create a white and blue knight creature token with Vigilance. Activate only if you've cast two or more spells. Marshal of Zalfir. Other knights you control get plus one, plus one. Pay a white and blue to tap it, another uh, to tap another target creature. And then we're getting into our commons here. And then a fun planes. I like that. And you can see the Phyrexian symbol right there. And then I think that is the Marshal of Zaphir art. Yep, that is it. Got it. All right. And then moving on to the next pack. It's funny. I have a dog, Miss Frizzle, and 
just recently adopted a cat, so Frizzle is trying desperately, desperately to make friends with her as I am opening these packs, and I'm hoping they're not going to get into it while I'm recording, because that would be fun. I don't know if I'd be able to edit that out or not. Um, Blighted Burgeoning, uh, we talked about this one earlier, really liked this card. Great way to add some extra mana. Hey, now there's a pretty lady. Archangel Elspeth, create uh, to two, uh, Y and two, create a uh, plus one, create a one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink, minus two, Put two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature. It becomes an angel in addition to other types and gains flying. And then minus six, return all non-land permanent cards with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Almost a Sun Titan effect. Um, I think she could be really powerful in Commander. So lots of uh, fun and interesting things I think you could do with her. We also have a Renata called to the hunt. I really like this art. This may go in my Vorinclex deck because I run her for the uh, extra counters. So her power is equal to your Devotion of Green. And when another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it comes in with an extra 1-1 one, one counter. So I'm going to put this up here. Uh, we also have another reprint, Saison, Perverter of Truth. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses two life and draws two cards. So a black howling mine. Well, or is it more, is it Night Whisper? I think, where you draw two, lose two. Um, so Night Whisperer on a, on a stick. So that's kind of a fun uh, reprint there. Uh, we've already talked about the Invasion of Kaldash go through some of these commons here. Uh, seal from existence. Uh, two white and one. Ward three. Enters the battlefield. Exile target. Non-land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves. But it's it's an enchantment with ward three. Oh, that's pretty good. So it's going to cost them three extra to remove it. And are they really going to spend the mana for whatever it is that they're trying to free up? I like that. Uh, merciless repurposing, uh, exile target creature to incubate three. That's uh, well for six. Uh, well, you get a you get rid of something, but get a three three out of it eventually, because really it's eight to get the creature out of it. So I don't know about that one. Kite cell, bola slinger, and then our land, and then our art. Emeritus of the half truths. All right, so that was a good hit with that Elspeth. I forgot that she was in this set. Um, have to figure out a good spot for her. All right, here is our full card. Okay, and we actually have a uh, rare siege. In that slot, Invasion of Segovia. Here's the battlefield. Create two 1-1 one, one blue Kraken creature tokens with Trample. And then flip it into uh, Katus Sea Tyrant of Segoda for a Serpent. Non-creature spells you have uh, you cast have Convoke. And then you have your up in step, untap up to four target creatures. So that gives you uh, some help, I guess, for casting your instant spells. All right, and let's see what our next card is. I think it is stuck because I know that's not it. Oh, look at that boy right there. Yarrick the Desecrated. Death Touch Life Link for an Elemental Horror. Uh, it is a Panharmonicon on a stick. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time for a 3-5. And that art is sick, y'all. Look at that. I like it. Uh, invasion of Amonkhet, the Deadland. When there's a battlefield, each player mills three, and then each opponent discards a card, and you draw a card. 
and that will flip into a uh, Lazatep Convert, a zombie. Uh, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature card in a graveyard, except it's a 4-4 black zombie in addition to its other types. Uh, Nizumi Freewheeler, I think that's from uh, Kawagama. Menache 3-3 three, three, Rat Samurai enters the battlefield. Each player mills three. Five and a Phyrexian White to transform it into a hideous flesh wheeler. Menache 4-5. When this creature transforms into a hideous flesh wheeler, put target permanent card with mana value two or less from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Lithomatic Barrage. Um, can't be countered. Deals one damage to target creature or planeswalker. Deals five damage if that target is white and or blue. So some targeted stuff. Uh, blue, uh, black and two for collective nightmare. Instant convoke. Target creature gets minus three, minus three. And then here we have some of our. That's kind of disturbing. Super disturbing. Um, our commons, our land, and our art. It's the fungus bunny. I use this in my um, pre release kit uh, deck. Um, kept threatening them with the bunny. They didn't want to mess with the bunny. The bunny. Okay. <laughs> side here. Crystal Carapace as our foil. Baral and Zev as our first card. Uh, first Strike Menache 2-4 for a is it one. Uh, whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, you may cast a spell with lesser mana value that shares a card type with it from your hand without paying its mana cost. Uh, if you don't, create First Mate Ragavan, a legendary 2-1 red monkey pirate creature token. It gains haste until end of turn. So that's that could be fun. Make some monkeys. Uh, this might go good in my Locust God uh, will deck. You know, cast a will, then cast another will for free. Um, so something kind of fun to play around with. And then we got uh, Radha Collect Coalition Warlord. Uh, red, green, and two for an elf warrior. When she becomes tapped, another target creature you control gets XX until end of turn, where X is the number of basic land types. Invasion of Nuke Penna. Here's the battlefield. You may sack an artifact or creature. If you do exile target artifact or creature and opponent controls, and that flips into Holy Frazzle Cannon, Batman. Uh, whenever a quick creature attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature and each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it and equip it for one. Uh, that's... <laughs> okay. Oh, no, that just struck me as a Batman phrase. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, so we've got a Harried Artisan. I uh, played this in my um, in my uh, pre-release deck. Uh, Hasty re uh, Red and Two for a 2-3. Uh, pay three and a Phyrexian White to transform it. Activate as a sorcery, and that turns into a Phyrexian Sky Flare. Flying Haste 3-4. So it gives you a nice flying beater. Uh, Stoke the Flames is another uh, card that I play. Convoke deals four damage to any target. Astral Wingspan uh, enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, and flying. That's pretty good. Uh, Ramosian Greatsword, Convoke. Equipped Creature gets plus three, plus one, and has Trample, equipped two. And then we get over into our commons. There's our art. That's one of the dual ones. I think that's Ojatai, and I can't remember who's writing him. 
All right, so we are about halfway through this stack. I already had uh, some excellent hits with Yarrick and Elspeth. Pretty great. Oh, wait, upside down, sorry. Oh, and a list card, Phyrexian Prowler, Fading 3, um, remove a fade counter, game of your upkeep if you can't sack it. Remove a fade counter from Phyrexian Prowler, it, uh, it gets plus one, plus one until end of time, end of turn. Okay, interesting. So that doesn't hang around for very long. Shatter the source. Uh, choose one, deal six damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle, or destroy target artifact. It is Convoke for red and five. All right, so coming to us from Amonkhet. A uh, human god, Dejeru and Hazret. Uh, two red, a white, and two. For as long as you have one or fewer cards in hand, so one or zero, they have Vigilance and Haste. Uh, whenever Dejeru De and Hazret attack, look at the top six cards of your library. You may exile a legendary creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Until end of your turn, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. And then we have a Judy, Judy, Judy. Uh, Judith the Scourge Diva. Um, other creatures you control get plus one, plus O. Oh. Uh, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, she deals one damage to any target, so you need some sack applets for her for an Aristocats deck. Uh, seen her really go off in Commander. Uh, Liliana's Talent. Oh, I like the art on this card. That's very nice. Uh, Enchant Planeswalker. Enchant Planeswalker has minus eight. Put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Whenever a creature deals damage to Enchanted Planeswalker, destroy that creature. So uh, that's kind of fun. Uh, be good for some recursion. I mean, it's Rise of the Dark Realms, uh, something that Liliana is known for. So that is uh, that's a fun talent. Invasion of Belette. Belinon uh, enters battlefield. Create a white, uh, two-two white blue night creature token with vigilance. Into a uh, Belinon War Anthem creature you control get plus one plus one. Ooh. Uh, we've done bonded herd beast, joyful storm sculptor. Uh, enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one blue and red elemental creature tokens. When you cast a spell that has Convoke, she deals one damage to each opponent and to each battle they protect. Shiv and Branch Burner Convoke, so two red and five for Flying Hasty Boy. And there's the Fungus Bunny, Placid Rotten Tail. Fear the Bunny. Look at it. Look. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that was a kind of a fun, <laughs> hard to play. <laughs> All right, and then get through these uh, commons in our land. And then there, that looks like Elspeth. All right, so back half of this pack. I hope y'all are okay with me talking a little bit about the uncommons and then kind of glazing over the commons. Uh, if you don't like that, let me know in the comments. Let me know how you'd rather I do it. So, uh, all right. Oh, there we go. There's a nice, fun hit. Urbrask the Hidden. So this is a reprint and in foil and in alt art of one of the original Praetors. Um, creatures you control have haste. Creatures your opponent control enter the battlefield tapped. So that is a nice little hit there. One of the reprints of how Urbrask was originally printed. Beautiful art. I love that. Uh, then we have Transcendent Message. Four blue and X. Convoke. Draw X cards. That's okay, but that's very expensive to cast that. Um, <coughs> Ferja, Judge of Valor. Um, flying Lifelink, two black and one white and two. 
Uh, whenever you cast your uh, second spell each turn, look at top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Oh, there we go. This will make uh, Corey Baumeister over at Star City Games uh, jealous for Yorian Sky Nomad. Uh, Yorian uh, comes to us from Ikoria. Uh, they are a bird serpent companion. Your starting deck uh, contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. Flying, when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of other Non-land permanents you control, you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of your next instep. It's a beautiful art on this card. Love it. And then we go into a common, uncommon. I think we've already talked about this card. Yes, we have. Tarkir Dune Shaper. One white for a dog warrior. Oh, this is actually a, a common. So we'll go ahead and slip over that. Wicked Slumber, Convoke, tap two target creatures, put a stun counter on either of them, and then put a stun counter on either of them. Artistic Refusal, uh, choose one or both. Uh, this does have Convoke, counter target spell, draw two cards, then discard a card. And then common. Common. There's our land and our art. Oh, what is that? Skithrix. What? I didn't realize they reprinted Skittles in this. That is, I love that art though. That is fantastic. Love it. All right. Okay, and then we've got another list card, Dominaria's Judgment, uh, white and two until end of turn. Creatures you control gain protection from white if you control plains, blue if you control an island, black if you control a swamp, red if you control a mountain, and green if you control a forest. So good way to protect all of your stuff at instant speed. Then we've got a Fearless Scald. And then here's another great hit, the new Shieldred. Um, Try to get up in here in this art here. Uh, so, Shieldred, uh, two black and three for a Menace. Um, when Shieldred enters the battlefield, each opponent sacks a non token creature or planeswalker. And then uh, she is a four five. And then you can pay a black and four, exile Shieldred, then return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. Activate only as a sorcery and only if an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. So you can pair that with some mill to create the true scriptures. Uh, so chapter one of this saga, when it comes in for each opponent, destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls. Chapter two, each opponent discards three cards, then mills three cards. And then chapter three, put all creature cards from all graveyards under the battlefield, under your control. Exile true scriptures. So again, a Rise of the Dark Realms effect, getting everything in all the graveyards. So you're going to want some mill cards, some discard cards, um, just to fill up uh, your opponent's graveyards so they're nice and plump for the picking. And the thing about these is after you do all this, chapter three goes off. She then flips back to Shieldred, so you can start the process all over again. So that is just, uh, that is too, too wicked. We also have a Zada Hedron Grinder. Um, when you cast an insert or sorcery spell that targets Zada, and only Zada, copy that spell for each other creature you control that the spell could target. Um, each copy targets a different one of those creatures, so you basically, you're playing pump spells, target Zada, all your other creatures get that pump up. Invasion of Mercada. I think we've already done this one. No, I don't think we have. Uh, so, enters the battlefield, discard a card, then draw two cards. Flips over into Chiron Flamerite Goblin Spellshaper. Uh, two and a... 
red to tap it, discard a card, create two one one blue red elemental creature tokens. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain haste and excuse me until end of turn. Uh, Seraph of New Capenna, flying two two, pay four in a Phyrexian black to flip it into Seraph of New Phyrexia, flying when it attacks you may sack another creature or artifact. She gets plus two plus one until end of turn. Change the equation, uh, blue and one, counter target spell with mana value two or less, counter target red or green spell, so that's you know, a little specific on that counter spell. Uh, render inert, remove up to five counters from target permanent to draw a card. And then we get over into our commons, 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 and then a full art plane. And there is, oh, who is that? Is that Heliod? Heliod the Warped Eclipse. Yep. So there's where Heliod got completed. Couldn't have happened to a nicer god. Okay. All right, so... Uh, we get a dinosaur token. Okay, then we've got a portent tracker as our foil. Oh, realm breaker, the invasion tree. Uh, pay two and tap it. Target opponent mills three cards. Put a land card from their graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains if this land would leave the battlefield. Exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. So, smill your opponents, steal their lands, and then if they go away, exile them. And then you pay 10 to sack it. Search your library for any number of Praetor cards and put them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle. So, you could do uh, Praetor Tribal with this. So, that could be uh, funny because there's now what? Uh... Praetors, there's 15 now, because Atrax is not a Praetor, I don't think. I think she's just a Phyrexian Horror. Uh, then we've got a reprint of Dina Soul Steeper from Strixhaven. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one. Um, pay one, sack another creature. She gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the sax creature power. I believe she you could run a CDH deck with her. That's not my gameplay, um, but she was, uh, when she came out, she was a very popular commander. So, Invasion of Xerix. Uh, I think we've already done this one. Invasion of Ergamon. Create a treasure, then you may discard a card if you do draw a card, and that flips over into Truga Cliff Charger, a rhino with trample 3-4, enters the battlefield, discard a card if you do, search your library for a land or battle, reveal it, put it into your hand. Herbality Instructor from Strixhaven, I imagine, uh, enters the battlefield, gain 3, transform it for 6 in a Phyrexian Black into Malady Invoker. A 3-3 Phyrexian Tree Folk, uh, transform uh, target creature and opponent controls gets minus O minus X until end of turn where it's its power. Kami of Whispered Hopes. This is probably from Kamigawa. I think we already talked about her. She seems like she would. Be, yep, we did talk about her earlier. Seems pretty good. Uh, Storm the Sea Core, talked about her. Uh, Rampaging Geoderm, another one of my all-star cards from my uh, pre-release deck where I came in 15 out of 16. Uh, Trample Hasty Boy for red, green, and two. Um, whenever you attack, target attacking creature gets plus one, plus, uh, yeah, plus one, plus one until end of turn. If it's attacking a battle, put a one, one counter on it instead. And then we get over into our commons. And then we've got a nice Phyrexian mountain there. And then some fun Yargle. Arg <laughs> I'm, in my head, that's what Yargle sounds like. And then after this pack, we only have one pack remaining in this stack. All right. Another um, 
in, uh, bleh, list card artillerize from Phyrexia as an additional cost uh, second artifact or creature. It deals five damage to target creature or player. So uh, red and three to deal five. I also played uh, Notvold Hermit in my pre-release kit. Uh, pre-release deck. So a green and three for a troll. Uh, four, four. Pay five and a Phyrexian blue to transform it into Chrome Host Hulk. Uh, when it attacks uh, up to one other target creature has base power and toughness five, five until end of turn. I would use it to target those uh, Phyrexian uh, creature tokens. Uh, give them a base power five, five plus the counters on top of it. I made 10 tens. So that was kind of cool. Uh, then we've got Voldaren Thrill Seeker back up to uh, sack this creature. It deals uh, damage equal to its power to any target. That's okay, I guess. Uh, then Emoti Celebrant of Bounty. Uh, this is a legendary Naga Druid. Uh, three green and blue. Cascade and spells you cast with mana value six or greater have cascade. So a great way to start pumping out some of your uh, your big spells. Then we go into Invasion of Morgana. Uh, I believe we talked about that one already. Aetherblade Agent. Matonic Brawler. Here's a battlefield with two one-on-one counters on it. If one or more one-on-one counters are put on another permanent you control, if it's the first time a one-on-one counter has been put on that permanent this turn, put a one-one. So you put a one-one on something that hasn't had counters before, this also gets buffed up. Scrappy Bruiser. I'm still trying to figure out what I could have. I pulled this card in my pre-release kit, but wasn't really sure how I could use it with the cards that I had. Um, when it attacks, up to one target attacking creature gets plus two plus zero oh, and gains trample until end of turn. Return that creature to its owner's hand at the end of combat. That would be good for some hasty boys, I think, um, if you could keep recurring them over and over again. All right, and then I think the rest of these are commons. Commons. Commons and a land. And then some arts. And that's a signed art card. Who did that? Omar and Rayon. Uh, Omar Rayon, excuse me. And that's Rankle and Torbrand. So some art, art of them. I like that. All right, so this is the last pack of this stack. And then we will move on to our last stack. And then our first rare, Invasion of Archaeos. Uh, when there's battlefield, search your library, graveyard, or outside the game for an instant or sorcery card you own, reveal it and put it into your hand. And then when it goes away, it transforms into Invocation of the Founders. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets of that copy. And that is a rare one. And then we also have Agar the Freezing Flame from Kaldheim. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess damage. If it if a giant wizard or spell you control dealt the damage this turn, draw a card. So uh, that trample damage going over to a player or a planeswalker nets you a card if that was from a giant wizard or a spell. And then we also got an or uh Atris, Oracle of half Truths. talked about them earlier. And then here we have a Rashimi and Ragavan. So dancing all the way around this Ragavan um, that got reprinted, we got the one card that makes the Ragavan token. This is Ragavan and Rashimi. Uh, one green, blue, and red. Whenever you cast your first spell during each of your turns, exile the top card of target opponent's library and create a treasure. There's Ragavan. Then you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost if it's a spell with mana value less than the number of artifacts you control. If you don't cast it this way, you may cast it this turn. <coughs> so 
good way to kind of steal cards from your opponents, which Ragavan likes to do. All right. Oh, and that is from, um, not from this set, it's from the Commander set. So there we go. And Invasion of Eldraine we have talked about. Sun Blessed Guardian, I believe we have talked about them. Stormclaw Rager. Sacrifice another creature or artifact, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. And then completed Huntmaster, Phyrexian Elf Warrior, whoops. Uh, sack, pay one and tap it, sack another creature or artifact, incubate three. And then we get into our common, common, and then our swamp. That is beautiful. I love that. All right, so this set, or this stack, and then there's Yargle and Multani. Would really love to see this card pulled. That would just be hilarious. Um, so this set gave us some really good uh, mythics out of it. Got our first Planeswalker. Uh, and then let me also give you another code. And here we go. And then after this break, quick break, we will... Uh, move on until our last stack and I've got those cards set right here ready to go all right we will see you in a minute and we'll get to cracking this last stack welcome back to the last stack of this March of the Machine set booster episode of breaking boxes uh, this is the Mild Mannered Mage on this last 10 packs of this box. We've pulled some great stuff so far. Let's see what else we can get out of this. All right, this first pack. All right, and here we go. Spinning the wheel. So we've got another... Emery Lurker of the Lock, but this time in foil. Love that art. Did think that it was Seb McKinnon, but it is not. It's Wiley Beckert. So great job, Wiley. I really like that art. Oh, here's another, or here's a great uh, pairing. Galta and Maverin uh, from Ixlan. Two green, two, three, two white, and three for a legendary... Dinosaur Vampire, Trample 1212, whenever you attack, choose one. Create a tapped and attacking XX green dinosaur creature token with Trample, where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures. Or create X11 white vampire creature tokens with Lifelink, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. Either way, you are in prime token colors. There's so many token color, uh, doublers in green and white and either which way you go you can either go big stompy uh, which is what galta likes to do uh, and those big stonky stompy uh, tokens will have trample or you make a bunch of one one vampires overwhelm the board gain some life throw in an aether flux reservoir nuke somebody for 50 and it'll be beautiful either way this is a fantastic, I think, fantastic card, either as the commander or running in the 99 of your um, of your token deck. And then we've got Athalia, Guardian of Thra Thrabin. Um, so this is the OG one. First strike, non-creature spells cost one more to cast for a white, one, white in one, two one human soldier from Innistrad. So some good ones. And we're not done yet. Another mythic, Chalet and Halar. Oh, this is one of the cards that I saw that is just like, oh my God. Okay, so we have red, green, white, and one for an angel elf, flying Vigi, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put on a creature you control, Shalai and Halar deals that much damage to target opponent. So you start slapping 1-1 one, one counters on, and red and green and white love those counters. Cathar's Crusade, um, throw some lifelink in here and do uh, Angel of Foon. 
Uh, when you gain life, put counters on a creature. Oh, and you could just devastate, devastate the entire board. So this is, uh, this is fantastic. Uh, we've done the Invasion of Dominaria, the Spell Spear, Norn's Inquisitor, Sculpted Perfection, Tiller of Flesh, yep, and then into our Commons and our Land, and then our Art. That's a fantastic art piece too. I'd get that on a uh, on a play map. All right, pack number two. If I can get into it. Token five here. We've already pulled. We pulled a. I think a. Uh, an alt art version of her. Is that right? I feel like I did. Yep, there she is. So we pulled an alt art version of a uh, of five here. Judge of Valor. Hoarding Broodlord five and th three black for Convoke flying. Enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, exile it face down and shuffle for as long as that card remains exiled, you may play it, and spells you cast from exile have Convoke. So that's kind of an interesting dark in there. And then we also have a Jury Master of the Review. Whenever you sack a permanent, put a 1-1 counter on her. When she dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So, I mean, make her big, sack her, and kill somebody with her. That's what I would do. Invasion of Pyrulia. Uh, enters the battlefield, scry three, then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land or double face card, draw a card. And that turns into Gargantuan Slabhorn. Uh, beast with uh, Trample Ward 2. Other transform permanents you control have Trample and Ward 2. So throw a lot of sieges, things that can transform some of these creatures where you can pay for Exian mana and some more. Make it kind of interesting. Captivated Weird. Defender for a uh, single blue. 1-3. Uh, Phyrexian Red and 3 to transform it into a Completed Conjurer. When it transforms into Completed Conjurer, exile the top card of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. All right. I believe we've talked about Zephyr and Lancer. Elspeth Smite. Uh, single White. Deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. If that creature would die, exile it. That's pretty good. Nice white removal spell. And then we get into our comments here. And Bloodfell Caves is foil. All right, pack number three. Gittering Surveyor is our foil. Invasion of Theros for our... Oh, and there's a Johnny. I think that's a Johnny. Uh, when here's the battlefield, search your library for an Aura God or Demigod card. Reveal it and put it into your hands, then shuffle. And then that turns into Ephra the Ever Sheltering. Has lifelink and indestructible as long as you control at least three other enchantments. So when another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Is this in Enchantress Colors? Oh, whoops. Uh, white. You could do some Enchantress things in white, I think. Maybe white green Enchantress or white green uh, blue. So that could work. Uh, we've talked about Shieldred's Faithful already. Invasion of Agartha, so we're probably going to be hitting a lot of uh, um, things that we've already seen as we are coming to the end of this box. And then a Phyrexian Mountain again. And then our art card. There we go. Pack number four of the third stack. All right, 
Guardian of Gilipur. White and two, flying, three, three. Enters the battlefield, exile up to one other target creature artifact you control. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So a nice way to kind of blink something, um, something of yours, or uh, if you get it flash. Oh no, it's got to be something that you control. So blink effects, enter the battlefields. I think that's pretty good. Oh, and then here is a reprint of for uh, Atraxa Praetor's voice. Love the art on this. Uh, flying, Vigi, Death Touch, Lifelink, beginning of your instep, proliferate. For a 4-4, four, four, uh, she can go so many different ways as a commander. I uh, love the art on that. Seer of Stolen Sight, Menace. Whenever one or more artifacts and or creatures you control are put into the graveyard, scry one. Invasion of Ragatha. I believe we have already talked about this one. Yep. Lots of repeats now. Oh, that one is a... Uh... So just kind of going through these and see what we haven't seen. I like that swamp too. Oh, and then there's that. Karn making a statement. The pacifist, pa, pacifist ripping off Elish Norn's head. I mean, that just, that is such a statement. Again, play that right there. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are at the halfway point of this last stack. Pack number five. Pile on, convoke, black and three, uh, destroy target creature or planeswalker, surveil two. That's, I mean, tap three creatures, cast it for one, destroy something uh, that's about to go off. Maybe a planeswalker that's about to ultimate for one mana, for potentially one mana. Uh, Wraith, Weatherlight Stalwart, white and blue. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may tap two untapped creatures you control if you do draw a card. Two white and three creatures you control get one, one in Vigilante until the end of turn. Oh, and then what is this? Lathiel, the Bounteous Dawn. Lifelink at the beginning of each instep. If you gain life this turn, distribute that many 1-1 one, one counters among a number of other target creatures. So that is pretty good. I like the art on that, too. That's very beautiful. Invasion of Feldrain. Again, you know, hitting a lot of these that we've already seen. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on those. Oh, whoops, put that in the wrong spot. And it kind of fuzzled me for a second. And another signed art card. That's kind of creepy and terrifying. I'm not going to lie. All right, back half of the packs. Let's see what we got. Progenitor Exart, white and XX. Enters the battlefield, incubate three X times. Okay, that's pretty cool. And tap it to transform target incubator token you control. That's not too bad with all the incubator mechanics. Uh, Quinde, pride of Femoref. Double strike creature you control. Uh, we've already seen him. Seen Zendikar. Ah, making a mess, I swear. Can't take me anywhere. Let me get this kind of... Straightened up real quick. Sorry about that. And then the rest of those go over here. And there we go. Pack number seven. Reparent of Coalition Relic. Tap it to add any uh, 
One mana of any color to your mana pool. Tap it to put a charge counter on it at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. Remove all charge counters from it. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool for each counter removed this way. I like it. Phyrexian Archivist into... Ooh, what is this? Wooberg for Invasion of Alara. When it enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile two non-land cards with mana value four or less. You may cast one of those two cards without paying its mana cost. Put one of them into your hand. Put the other card exiled this way on the bottom of your library in any order. Okay, that's not too bad. And then it flips into Awaken the Maelstrom. Uh, it's all colors. Target player draws two cards. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. Create a token that's a copy of a permanent you control. Distribute three one one counters from among one, two, or three creatures you control. Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. So that does a lot of work. But to get that to go off, you've got to knock these seven counters off of this siege. So that could be fun if you had something that said destroy target siege or battle. Um, that way you can get that effect fairly quickly. Uh, we've already seen Inga. Uh, Vivian's Talent. What is this? Enchant Planeswalker. Enchant Planeswalker has plus one. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a loyalty counter on Enchanted Planeswalker. This might go into my Vorinclex deck, so I'm going to put it up here so I don't forget about it. <laughs> uh, because that seems like a good way to cycle through your cards. And again, just kind of going through. Don't have a whole lot left. Oh, I like that forest. Very trippy. All right. Uh, down to t after this one, we've got two packs left. What other good stuff are we going to pull? Are we going to get that uh, Multani and Yargle? Because <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, so here's a full Tetsuka Uazama Uma, Umezawa Fugitive. I already talked about him a little bit. Zephyr Singer Convoke, two blue and two, flying veggie, enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on each creature that convoked it. Okay. Grim Grin. I like me a Grim Grin. Corpse Born. Enters the battlefield tapped, but doesn't untap during your untap step. Sack another creature, untap it, and put a 1 1 counter on it. When it attacks, destroy target creature defending player controls, then put a 1 1 counter on Grim Grim. There's just some zombie BS right there. And look at that art. That is fantastic. Makes me want to rebuild Grim Grim. Makes me. Maybe I will. I don't know. Invasion of Moog. And then we get into our comments. And then there is... What is that? Captain Lannery Storm on top of a beastie. Alright. Next to the last pack. So this is the penultimate one. Let's see what we got. Nihil Spellbomb from the list. Prioretic Prankster. Glistening Dome. This was my um, pre-release card, my stamped, full stamped card. Incubate X twice, where X is the number of lands you control. So you'll incubate uh, at least minimum four, I would say, when you try to cast this, and you get that twice, so you get two uh, two tokens that you can then turn into at least four fours, unless you're casting it late game for something massive. So I kind of liked this in the pre-release uh, set. Tamerit, Chosen from Death, uh, two black for Demigod. Toughness is equal to your Devotion of Black, so it's a two and then whatever your devotion is. 
pay a black and one, exile two target cards from graveyards, gain one life. I mean, it, it's okay. Uh, Finn the Fang Bear, give your attacking creatures. Uh, uh, whenever a creature you control with death touch deals de combat damage to a player, that player gets two com two poison counters. And I love the art on that. That is fantastic. Again, play Matt. <laughs> All right, Invasion of Lorwyn, Invasion of Asgall. All right, so we've got some good stuff here, and we are now officially on the penultimate pack. This is it, people. Here's our good stuff right here. What will we get? All right. Drum roll, please. Unseal the Necropolis. There is a Heliod. Heliod, the Radiant Dawn, enters the battlefield, return target enchantment card that isn't a god from your graveyard to your hand. For a 4-4, pay three in a Phyrexian Blue to transform him into Heliod, the Warped Eclipse. You may cast spells as though they had flash. Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card your opponents have drawn this turn. So, somebody's drawing a lot of cards, that's going to make it easier for you to cast stuff. And then we also have Valduk, Keeper of the Flame, at the beginning of combat on your turn, for each aura and equipment attached to Valkit, make a 3-1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste, exile those tokens at the beginning of the next end step. Invasion of Vern, and then I think this is the rest is just going to be commons and uncommons. And there we have it. That is this box of March of the Machine. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Did I get some good stuff? What was your best hit off of your boxes? Uh, and then to wrap it up, we've got one last arena code for you. So this is three codes for this pack. And here it is for you. We'll leave this up here for a second. And there you go. So once again, March of the Machines. Got some good stuff out of this box, I think. Uh, let me know in the comments. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Um, I hope that you are able to get those uh, arena codes and do some good stuff with it. Once again, this is Seth, your mild-mannered mage, wishing you some happy magicking, and we will see you on the next episode of Breaking Boxes. Have a great one.